Hello, everyone. Welcome back to our video series on color Bible marking. I'm your host for this series, Chris Emerson, and we're getting near the very end of this. We are in lesson six in a six lesson booklet. So we have today's 10 minute video. We'll come back next week with 10 more minutes and we will be done. I'll say this, if this is your first time to tune in on what we're doing here, you come at a really good time. Lesson six is about an easy sort of pattern that you can use to negotiate all 150 Psalms and also the major and minor prophets. Next week, we will talk about those prophets. Today, we'll be talking about the Psalms. There are, as I said, 150 of them, and sometimes they get this sort of bad rap as uh, just a whole bunch of the same kind of thing. Maybe they even feel repetitive to you. I assure you, nothing could be further from the truth. Each one of those psalms was written in a specific way to address a specific concern or to praise God in some unique circumstance, and each one is beautiful. We want to apply a simple six-color standard so that you can see that. So I hope you're ready to do that. If you have your Bible handy, that's good. Remember, you can always download this color Bible marking book. You go to lindalechurchofchrist.com. You click on the color Bible marking box. There's a PDF file. We are on page 44. Several of the Psalms we will talk about today are printed out for you, or at least they're, they're there for you to print out. Some of them are already color co uh, coordinated, so you can see how it works. And then I just have some printed out that are blank so that you can apply some of your own, maybe trial and error or standard to that. Remember, as always, if you have your map pencils handy, you can just go to the biblical text that you have at home and go for it. I think that today it's worth mentioning, and I'll zoom in a little bit, that the bookmark becomes very important to our study. We've been working the front half of this bookmark for most of our lessons, New Testament marking. Now we've moved to this back portion, and you probably can't make that out from where you are, but at least it'll give you some idea of what you can find. If you'll go to that same website I just mentioned to you, you can get a PDF of this, and we're applying six colors. It says right here, Bible marking, Psalms and Prophets. Anytime you see sinful conduct, People aren't doing what they're supposed to be doing. You underline that sin in blue. Anytime you see God punishing them or announcing punishment against them, you underline that in red. So naturally, you're going to see a lot of blue and red connected. People do things they ought not do, and God gets angry with them. Tons of that in the, uh, in the prophets. And then green, lots of this in the Psalms, righteous living. Maybe the author is doing the right thing, or he's prescribing the audience to do the right thing. When you see godly living, you underline that in green. That brings us down to orange, blessings from God. Green and orange go together a lot. When we do the things that God says to do, there are a tremendous amount of blessings that come our way. So you'll begin to see the association between these top two colors and these next two colors when we get into the Psalms today. And then we added something unique to the Psalms, and it's right here. We underline in brown requests that are made of God. Now, why would we do that? There are times when the psalmist says, God, please do this or help me with that. We don't know if God actually does it or not, but we know that the request is being made, so we underline that in brown. And then lastly is yellow, glory of God. Any passage that just magnifies the greatness of God or tells us of his heavenly position, we underline that in yellow. We're keeping our pencil handy like always. We're circling references to God. We're boxing in a few proper names, and that is it, I assure you. Even if it sounds a little complicated now, that's a pretty simple process. If you have your booklet on page 44, that same standard is laid out there for you. Just hop right in. Do a psalm a day for 10 days and see how that works. It's pretty cool once all of your psalms are completed. Somebody texted me a couple of years ago and said, I would like to read psalms today that are simply about the glory of God. Now, let me just ask you guys, if somebody asked you for a list of psalms to read about the glory of God, how would you find that? I mean, you can't just go back to your index and look for glory. You need to find those types of psalms. Well, it was pretty easy in this Bible I have over here. I just started flipping through until I saw large chunks of yellow. Anytime I saw a large chunk of yellow, I knew that it was magnifying the glory of God, and I just wrote that down. It took about 30 seconds to send them 10 psalms that they could read. Maybe you get up one day and say, I just want to read about how to serve God better. I want to put psalms in my heart, songs in my heart about what it means to be good to God. Well, it's pretty easy to do. You just go through your psalms, flip through, look for large sections of green. Green is for righteousness. So I'm just here to tell you, if you haven't done anything else in this series, 
this would be a great exercise to do. Even if you don't apply it to the prophets, just applying it to the Psalms. I'm going to show you a few examples in the five minutes or so that we have left. For instance, if your Bible is open to Psalm 1, I'll just show you a few of these. If your Bible is open to Psalm 1, the first two verses, how blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. I just underlined all that in green. That's what a righteous man does. There are some things he does not do, and there are some things that he does. Verse 3, he will be like a tree firmly planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither, and in whatever he does, he prospers. Underlined all that in orange. Because of his godliness, God is blessing him and preserving him. The second half of the psalm goes in an entirely different direction. Verse 4, the wicked are not so, but they are like the chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. I took my blue for sin and I underlined wicked in verse 4 and wicked in verse 5 and sinners in verse 5. But most of those three verses you just underlined in red. They're like the chaff which the wind drives away. They will not stand. They will perish. So there you have it, the whole Bible in one psalm. If we do the things that God says, he will bless us tremendously, green, orange. If we choose to be wicked, blue, then we will be punished, red. I also underlined in yellow, verse 6, the Lord knows the way of the righteous. He's a great and omniscient and powerful and amazing God. So those are a few of the ones that we can do. Let's go to one that's familiar to you. How about Psalm 23? Head over to Psalm 23. You probably can quote this, but this time all you're going to need are two colors, orange and green. It's a very positive, optimistic psalm, and you can notice that immediately. So Psalm 23, verses 1 through 3, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Just get your orange out and underline all of that. Those are tremendous blessings in being in a relationship with God as our shepherd. Verse 4, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. I chose to underline that in green. Because I'm choosing to walk through the valley of the shadow of death without fear of evil. That's a choice that I'm making. But why am I making that? Because you are with me. Your rod and your staff comfort me. You prepare a table before me. You anoint my head with oil. The whole rest of the psalm is orange. In fact, you could underline the entire psalm in orange. It's just simply about the blessings of God. So you start doing that. Psalm 1, 2, 3, 4, and move your way through. And you'll see how everyone will be colored a little bit differently. I'll show you another, Psalm 29, Psalm 29. Take a look at that with me. Verses one and two, ascribe to the Lord, O sons of the mighty, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength, ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name, worship the Lord in holy array. I underline all that in green. I am ascribing things to the Lord in worship. And then the entire rest of the Psalm almost is yellow. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is over many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is majestic. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. All the way down through verse 10 is yellow. It's God's great glory. At the end of the psalm, verse 11, the Lord will bless his people with peace. Orange. I start by ascribing him honor because of who he is, and he blesses me. There are just so many like that that you can do. I'll show you just one more before time runs out. We could just go on and on with this. But how about Psalm 52? Let me just do that and then we'll be done. If you have any questions about the Psalms or you need any help, just reach out to me through Facebook Messenger or comments or whatever. Psalm 52, verses 1 through 4. Why do you boast in evil, O mighty men? The loving kindness of God endures all day long. Your tongue devises destruction like a sharp razor, a worker of deceit. You love evil more than good, falsehood more than speaking what is right. You love all words that devour a deceitful tongue. So that's a lot of blue. There's a little bit of yellow in verse 1 about God's loving kindness, but a whole lot of blue because of their sin. So guess what happens in verse 5? But God will break you down forever. He will snatch you up and tear you away from your tent and uproot you from the land of the living. Because of their sin... Judgment is coming, blue and red. The rest of Psalm 52 is green because he advises them to take a better route and do better, just like he does us every day. Hey, give this a go. Try it out. Any questions, 
Give me feedback on that. I'll do everything I can. Thanks for tuning in. More on this in the profits next week. Thanks.